2017 Audi A3 sedan. Someone said to me recently they think the 2017 Audi A3 sedan is the best looking sedan on the market. Like, of all the sedans out there and we were talking proper sedans, not four-door coupes the thing is a pretty good looker, especially considering its compact dimensions. It is hard enough to make smaller three-box models appear attractive, let alone luxurious. Australian buyers clearly agree with the sentiment, with about 45% of a three models sold being that body style. That's pretty crazy considering how hatchback heavy sales usually skew in the small car segment. It's decently priced, too, you can get yourself behind the wheel of an A3 sedan from as little as $41,500 plus on road costs that's the 1.4 TFSI COD Paul tested recently. The version we have here is the mid-range 2.0 TFSI variant, priced from $47,500 plus on roads. Both it, and the entry model, are front-wheel drive. There is also a quattro all-wheel drive version with the same 2.0 TFSI engine that is the regular model range topper at $51,100 plus on roads then it's a bit of a step up, in performance and price, to the S3 sedan a $64,500. Our car was fitted with a couple of option packs the $2,900 Technic pack with Audi's virtual cockpit display, a sport steering wheel and a better version of the navigation system with live maps, and 5 free map updates, 2 SD card slots and a 10GB music storage system. Those extras do add some further flair to the cabin, though the fact the car can't be had with the latest Audi Connect system with Google Maps is a bit of a shame. As for standard kit, there's a bit missing for a car at this price point no matter how nice it looks. You miss out on push button start, smart key and entry, electric seat adjustment, seat heaters and adaptive cruise control, all of which can be had in sub dollar 30000 sedans from mainstream brands like Subaru. That's not to say the vehicle's equipment list is sparse, with 17-inch alloy wheels, xenon headlights, leather-trimmed sports seats, aluminium trim inlays and door sill protectors, dual-zone climate control, an 8-speaker stereo with a 7.0-inch screen, satellite navigation, and Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, optional in the base car. The interior is a nice place to be living up to the feel of what you expect from a luxury German brand in a compact, cheaper way. The LED lighting in the cup holders, door grabs and footwells makes it feel like a private little room when you're driving on the highway at night, and the xenon headlights are pretty darn good, too. There are soft touch materials on the dashboard, padded sections on all four doors, and the retracting display in the middle of the dash still looks pretty smart, and it is logically controlled by the MMI touch rotary dial with trackpad on top. The supportive leather seats with manual adjustment are comfortable, and up front there's an extendable squab for those with longer limbs. Taller occupants may feel as though they're sitting up a bit too high, even in the lowest seat setting. The back seat is about as roomy as you'd expect for a small sedan, in that it isn't massive, leg room and headroom is tight for tall occupants, and while tow room is fine, your feet feel a bit hemmed in, and those with big clod hoppers may need to angle their ankles just so to get in and out the door openings aren't huge, and the sills do intrude a bit. The back seat also falls short of practical elements, there is no center armrest nor are there cup holders, but there are mesh map pockets, bottle holsters in the doors, and the back seat has its own 12 volt outlet as well as air vents. Up front there are larger door pockets with bottle holders, a pair of cup holders and a covered center console bin with two USB points and an auxiliary jack. In the glove box is a CD slot with SIM input and twin SD, which eats into space. The back seat folds down in a 60 colon 40 manner to increase load through boot space, and with the seat backs in place the cargo area has 425 liters of capacity which is good for the size of the car and is a squared off shape to make suitcase storage easy. If you've got awkward shaped items there's a mesh net to keep stuff secure, and under the boot floor there's a space saver spare. On the safety front, the A3 sedan has 7 airbags, dual front, front side, full length curtain and driver's knee, not to mention autonomous emergency braking, 
driver drowsiness monitoring, a rear view camera, front and rear parking sensors, tire pressure monitoring and auto headlights and wipers. Spending up on this spec sees you also get rear cross traffic alert and blind spot monitoring. Powering the A3 2.0 TFSI is, you guessed it, a 2.0 liter 4 cylinder engine producing 140 kilowatts of power, from 4200-6000 rpm, and 320 nm of torque, from 1500-4200 rpm. Changing gears is a 7-speed dual clutch automatic with paddle shifters. Fuel use is claimed at 5.8 liters per 100 kilometers, and we saw 6.6 L-100 km over our testing regime including highway, stop start and urban driving. It's also a very sprightly thing, offering superb roll-on response in gear, a sudden prod of the throttle in fourth gear and getting from 50 km per hour to 80 km per hour is managed in a heartbeat, or two if that type of speed really gets your blood moving. Keep this in mind just a few years ago a 0 to 100 km per hour time of 6.9 seconds was considered to be a hot hatch benchmark, and that's what Audi claims for this compact luxury sedan. If you go for the Quattro version it is even more rapid 6.2 SEC. For most people this drivetrain will offer the thrills they need without spending more on the AWD version or the S3. Our beloved founder Tony even said he could see himself hurtling along an Autobahn at 200 km per hour in it without any hassle or hesitation whatsoever. While you won't be pushing those speeds here, the thing is properly settled at freeway pace, with the engine coasting along in 7th speed at just below 2000 rpm. It's not as loud as some competitors on course chip surfaces. There can be a touch of lag when you flatten the throttle either to get away from a standing start, or to overtake, which is mainly the transmission trying to figure out what gear it needs in that situation, but in almost every other instance it is sharp and smart. Unlike the base model, this version doesn't have cylinder deactivation tech that cuts two cylinders under low loads. One item you get in this model but you don't get in the base car is the Audi Drive Select system with dynamic, comfort, efficiency, auto and individual modes that changes the engine, gearbox, and steering configuration. We left it in auto most of the time, because that's where it seemed to do its best work. In sport mode, for example, the engine holds gears longer and that means it can rev too far past its peak torque zone, and the steering becomes heavy to the point that it makes it feel a tad awkward in corners. In auto mode the steering is lighter and more malleable, and it doesn't feel as though it wants to understeer unless you're pushing it too hard. In dynamic mode the extra steering weight seemingly emphasizes torque steer and understeer. No matter the mode the car's brakes can be touchy if you tap the pedal on the highway you may shock any passengers you have with you with how sharply they react, but they hold up well in harder driving. There is plenty of grip, and the suspension is very well sorted. It holds a nice flat line in corners, and while the wheels on our test car may look a little small in contrast to the optional S-Line exterior styling kit, they play a part in keeping things under control in terms of ride comfort. Like many cars, the suspension isn't fond of road joins, but it doesn't get too flummoxed by those types of things, and while it isn't what you'd describe as soft, it is compliant, particularly over rutted, pockmarked surfaces. Audi has a 3-year slash unlimited kilometer warranty, and the brand offers a pre-purchase service plan spanning 3 years slash 45,000 km, with maintenance due every 12 months or 15,000 km, whichever occurs first, and it costs $1,680. So we've established that it's a good-looking car, one that drives well and feels pretty nice inside. The thing that lets down the 2017 Audi A3 sedan is the fact there are some really great small sedans without prestige badges at the moment, many of which are packed with equipment that this thing misses out on. It's $20,000 more than some of those cars, too.